I bring to you John James Jr. Let us see you. Hi, I'm going to the house today. You know what happened when Jesus came back home? Who the heck am I? Who the heck am I standing before you? I'm your son. I am your return on investment. And I am humbled to be standing here at the pool. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for your love and for your prayers. I was born in 1981. And uh, the Greens sitting right here were, uh, were with my mom on the day before she gave birth. Harper, you were there. I was sitting right here when Reverend Moore gave the children's sermon. We traveled with Dr. Pearson to the Gambia to pin him to, to, to good water for people who need it. Mrs. Daniels raised me up in the nursery. Mrs. Matthews and then Miss Gibson raised me up in the shooting department. Ms. Austin and Miss Brown in Sunday school. Mr. Lindsay in Troop 647 down in Boy Scouts. Mr. Lindsay used to give us peppermints every single Sunday right here. As we went down, became a junior trustee, counting money. That's why I learned how to count. Right here, being raised in the church. Clarence Bell, God rest his soul. Who taught me how to play basketball, working community. I learned right here the value of faith and family, God and country, and service before self. And I was tapped out by you. See, those aren't conservative values, those are American values. You taught me those things right here at Harvard. Reverend Adams christened me, he mentored me, and he dumped me in that pool. That pool that was so cold, but I didn't feel it because I was washed in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Reverend Adams, thank you for giving me a shot. Thank you for giving me a chance. But the answer to your question earlier is what are we missing? We need to recognize that we need to submit, we need to sacrifice, and we need to serve. I have a passion for service that you developed in me, Hart. That's the reason why I went to Ranger School. That's the reason why I went to West Point. That's the reason why I deployed to Operation Rock and Freedom. That is why I dedicated my life to service. You prayed me through a rock. But the thing is, one of the things that disturbed me most in Iraq was the fact that while I was over there, I get treated by the things I see in Armed Forces Network on the television when I come back from combat missions of areas of home that look worse than combat zone I'm flying in. And I ask myself, I'm over here fighting for Iraqi freedom. Who's back home fighting for my people? Who's back home fighting for economic opportunity for my people? And I recognize and realize that they're precious few. Because when 98% of us vote in one party, the neither party has to work for our vote. I recognize that in order to make sure that we improve and move to the future, righteous indignation is not going to be enough. We need righteous influences in the right places, in the highest houses in this country. We are not lords of the state. We built this country on our backs, and we were slaves while we were even free. Yeah. Until we recognize that we come from princes, and we are blessed by the Lord. And we have an obligation, not an option, to stand up. We need to make sure that we are putting our political prejudices aside and sending our best to represent and to serve us. I am not running for power. And I'm not running to beat anyone. I'm running to serve the Lord. And I am running to help my people. But I recognize I'm not going to walk into Harper, be black and win. I'm not going to walk into Pontiac and speak in Detroit, be black and win. I got to come with it because my mama taught me that I got to be twice as good to be considered half as qualified. And I recognize this. I'm coming to you being raised right here, but then when you sent me out into the world, you prepared me for a world that is broken, Harper. I was trained in West Point, I was trained on the battlefield. I brought all of my aircraft and all my men back home. The world's a dangerous place, and we need somebody in the U.S. City who understands how to keep us safe because they've done it before. I have that experience. We need somebody who recognizes that economic opportunity just ain't about jobs. It's more than jobs. It's about the things that go into jobs. It's about taking our care of our students and our teachers. It's about early childhood development, workforce development. It's about criminal justice reform. It's about creating an opportunity for people to succeed because 
people like my father came up here from the Jim Crow South. People like you came up here from the Jim Crow South and you pulled me up. You taught me what was possible. Mary McLeod Bethune taught us what was possible when we believe and we have faith. See, the thing is, the Lord doesn't give us a plan. He tells us to go. He tells us to go and do what scares us. Can I tell you, I'm terrified of Washington. I don't want to go to Washington. I don't want to go to Nineveh. But you know it's not my choice because the Lord does not care about my convenience. He cares about my obedience. I am being sent to serve. I have been given my blessings to be a blessing to others. Because though I know what it's like to be an officer, to be an officer in the United States Army, to be sent into an area where people would just as soon see you, that is look at you. I understand what it feels like to be pulled over on the side of 15 mile tub. I understand what, what the heart racing and, and the palm and the sweat and, 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 and you're breathing a little bit fast. And they teach you in the army that you need to be able to control yourself so you can manage the battle. I'm asking myself, why am I in Bloomfield Hills and displaying the same, the, the, the same things that I would feel about in combat? And I realize that I am. It's because I am. Because I'm sitting here back home, not doing anything but driving around in the suburbs, and I could lose my life just for being a black man. And I'm wondering why am I sitting here, and this is the day that maybe my three year old son would see me bleed out the street. I recognize you from both sides. And we need to have more people in the floor of the US Senate who recognize, who can relate to people who they're trying to represent. Something on April 15th knocked me on my knees, and I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Because the thing is, you didn't come here to hear me preach. You came here to get your community. I'm, I'm telling you, that, 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 I'm, I'm here. I'm here because I want, I want to do what I can. Something knocked me on my knees on, on April 15th last year. And all I knew to say was to take my life, Lord, take my life. And I didn't know what that meant at the time, but what I do know is my God was faithful. I do know that if I walk by faith, not by sight, he would make the path straight, but not necessarily easy. And that's why I'm here. I'm here to serve. Say, I do not like politics, but I love this country. And I'm not going to put anyone's red box on anyone's blue box. I recognize that the system has kept black folks locked up, drugged up, and uneducated. Failed urban uh, policies and efforts crafted by self-interested politicians keep us in debt and dependent. It shackles our minds and destroys our family, retards our economic mobility, and we need to make sure that we stand up because there are too many places in our community that hasn't changed in 50 years. You've built me up, and now I would ask you to trust me. It's time for someone with a clear vision to try to lead. It's time for someone who's going to put the American dream for everyone up there to lead, and by the grace of God and your support on November 6th, we will have somebody who can effectively listen and learn before they leave. Thank you for your prayers, Robert. Thank you for your love.